Hello there and welcome to EPA Insights. I'm Laura from the Qualification Development Team here at Highfield and today I'm going to talk to you about the Business Administrator Standard, that's IPA version 1.0 Assessment Plan Number APO3. So why EPA Insights? Well, we want to be able to share with you what we've learned since assessing on this standard. This includes an analysis of the grades and looking at any common trends. We also want to acknowledge the change in assessment plans, whilst gaining assessor feedback and customer feedback where we may have had queries in the past. We hope that you find this useful. So firstly, we're going to look at the differences of moving from APO2 to APO3. Then we're going to take a closer look at each assessment method, starting with the knowledge test, presentation and Q&A, and then moving on to the portfolio interview. Then finally, we'll finish off with some general hints and tips for endpoint assessment. So looking at APO2 versus APO3, um, some apprentices have found APO3 more challenging, which shows in our grade profiles. And there may be several reasons for this. When looking at grading, APO2 was based on percentage scores achieved in each assessment method, meaning the pass rate was 60% and the distinction rate was 80% on APO2 compared to 100% of assessment criteria on APO3. When looking at methods, um, the assessment methods remain the same on APO3 with a 60 minute multiple choice test, a 15 minute presentation followed by a 15 minute Q&A and a 45 minute portfolio interview. However, there are more criteria than can be covered in either the presentation or the portfolio interview, which should help learners holistically. We'll cover this in more detail shortly. So then moving on to theory, in the presentation, it's really important to ensure learners are utilising this assessment method by aligning their chosen project as closely to the pre project presentation criteria as possible and including the question set by the assessor. So looking at the project and presentation, the assessment plan dictates that the apprentice delivers a presentation on a project they've carried out or a process they have improved from month nine on programme. The project should be uploaded at Gateway. The assessor will then review it and set a question for the apprentice to answer by featuring it in their presentation. Now, what we're finding is that some learners are not covering enough relevant criteria in the presentation, such as project management, meaning that they need to cover an awful lot in the Q&A in the short time allowed. It's really key here to ensure that the project aligns with the assessment criteria. The apprentice may have carried out an amazing project and be passionate about it, but if it isn't line, aligned with the criteria, then this can be detrimental. So, for example, processes sometimes tend to appear heavily in the portfolio interview. However, these are mandatory criteria to cover in the presentation and Q&A. So include how company processes were followed as part of their project. Another example here is stakeholders and IT. It's likely that these could potentially be covered as part of a project. So try and include them in the presentation wherever possible to minimise the amount of either or criteria that need to be covered in the portfolio interview. Now, thinking about the assessment criteria, it's multifaceted. There are a lot of points to cover and learners need to make sure they cover all of these points. Unlike APO2, if one pass criteria is not met, that overall assessment method is failed. They need to be able to give specific examples, but timing is key. And they need to be able to cover as much as possible in the presentation. The more that they cover in the presentation means that the Q&A can be used to clarify, build on and stretch the learner to distinction criteria if needed. Remember to carry out mocks with your apprentices, which will help build their confidence ready for the big day. So some apprentices are failing to talk about key terms in the presentation. It's really important that they are able to demonstrate their knowledge of these key terms, which are outlined in the assessment criteria. It's so important to emphasise these as much as possible throughout the presentation in order to meet the criteria. So we analysed a proportion of learner reports where learners had failed to pass the presentation in Q&A. For each assessment criteria, you can see the proportion of learners who have either passed, failed or not even been able to attempt the assessment criteria. The high proportion of brown means that learners in the main did not have the opportunity to attempt the criteria. 
This sometimes happens with distinction criteria where there was not the opportunity to stretch to these due to time constraints. An example of this uh, is processes and decision-making criteria, which we'll delve into on the next slide. We've also identified higher rates of learners who have attempted criteria, but unfortunately not passed them. And the trend here is around project management. So let's have a look at some of the common assessment criteria not attempted. PR3 understands and follows organisational processes and promotes their adherence and improvements. So the trap learners are falling into here is not demonstrating how they promote adherence and improvements. So they should prepare to give examples of the improvements that they have recommended and how they not only follow processes, but promote adherence with others. DM5. Decisions are continuously made by thoughtfully considering different information and the risks of any action. Now, again, the trap here is that learners aren't identifying the risks, so they should prepare to provide examples of how they have used different sources of information and identify any risks. DM6. Decisions are fully evidenced and justifiable. So again, the trap here is not providing evidence to back up the justification. Learners should prepare to provide sources of evidence to support why decisions were made. So some of the common criteria being attempted but not passed focus primarily around project management. Remember, this is where apprentices need to be able to explain how they planned, managed and led on a project and which project management tools they used. This is sometimes a sticking point for apprentices. So let's look at some of those common failures. PM3, demonstrate some understanding of project management tools and principles. Now, the trap here is that learners have a lack of understanding of those different tools and principles. They should demonstrate an understanding of project management tools and principles such as stages or project life cycles. With PM4, plans and manages significant projects and can describe what made it a success. The trap here is a lack of planning covered and not detailing the significance of the project. Learners should prepare to explain what made a project significant, what impact it had on the organisation, and could even think, give some examples of additional projects. As PM5 demonstrates strong leadership skills when managing a project, the trap here is that learners are just describing what they did during the project. They should provide examples of how they have demonstrated those leadership skills. And finally, PM6 understands and is able to apply a strong grasp of project management tools and principles. Now here, learners are simply just providing a Gantt chart. They should demonstrate how they have used project management tools and principles and explain how these can be utilised to support with the project. So now let's move on to the portfolio interview. So when we look at the assessment criteria, they are multifaceted. There is a lot to cover. The apprentice should have access to their portfolio during the interview for reference, but they don't want to get distracted by this as time is tight. So ensure it's easy to navigate. They could add some headline points or pieces of work that they want to talk about, which would prompt discussion. So some apprentices fail to talk about key terms in the portfolio interview. They should provide real examples and when discussing things such as internal and external factors, they should explain how these impact their role. When looking for distinction, they should emphasise how they promote or champion things like policies and procedures. So we analysed a proportion of learner reports where learners had failed to pass in the portfolio interview. For each assessment criteria, you can see the proportion of learners who have either passed, failed or not even been able to attempt the assessment criteria. Now, if you look at the high proportion of brown, this means that learners in the main did not have the opportunity to attempt the criteria. We expect this to happen with distinction criteria where there was not the opportunity to stretch to these due to time constraints. Now, the highest proportion of criteria here, which learners attempted but did not pass, shown in red, uh, were also mainly distinction criteria. So let's take a look at some of those criteria that most commonly aren't passed within the portfolio interview. TO3 shows a thorough understanding of the organisation's purpose, aims and way of working, putting it in context of the wider economy and political environment. Now the trap here is that uh, learners are not covering all aspects of the criteria. 
They should cover all parts of the criteria, especially relating to the wider economy or sector and political factors that could influence or impact their organisation. With RR2, it shows a thorough knowledge of relevant laws and regulations and consistently follows them. The trap here is that learners uh, have a lack of knowledge of relevant laws and regulations. They should give examples of specific laws and regulations. They could utilise the portfolio of evidence to support with this. With EE2 shows a deep understanding of the external factors facing the organisation and how they relate to their role. The trap here is that learners are not explaining how these factors impact their role. They should give examples of what factors are having an impact on their organisation and specifically how these relate to, the, uh, relate to or affect their role. With EE3 seeks additional information about how these factors are developing. Here, learners are simply not explaining how they keep up to date. So they should prepare to explain how they are proactively keeping up to date with developing factors, what sources of information they are using, for example. So we then analyse the remaining criteria where learners had failed to pass them in either the project presentation or the portfolio interview. So for each assessment criteria, you can see the proportion of learners who have either passed, failed or not even been able to attempt the assessment criteria. Now, this emphasises the importance of trying to cover as many of the criteria as possible as part of the project presentation. So, delving into the most common either or criteria failures, we have ST3, understands and follows the principles of stakeholder management. Now, the trap here is uh, learners are generalising stakeholder engagement. They should give examples of how to adapt between different types of stakeholders. They could apply stages of stakeholder management or embed a stakeholder matrix grid. The CO6 champions and appropriate choice of communication channels. The trap here is that learners are not explaining how they proactively champion these channels of communication. They should give examples of why they would use different methods of communication and how they have promoted these to others. So what are the benefits? PL7 is proactive in taking responsibility for areas of logistics and has excellent examples to demonstrate this. Now, the trap here is that learners often have not had exposure to this kind of criteria or lack examples. So they should give specific examples of how they take responsibility for logistics. Now, this could include facilitating meetings, accommodation or travel. So finally, let's move on to some general hints and tips for assessment. Now, EPA reports. All learners will receive an EPA report and you can use these to analyse for your learners which particular areas or assessment criteria they struggle on. This will help you to continu continuously improve the quality of your learning programmes. Now thinking about EPA kits um, as part of our support materials, these have amplification to further describe the areas that will be assessed. There are also think about documents for learners to help them prepare for endpoint assessment from a practical point of view, as well as explaining what will be covered. All of these are available to download from our website. Now, thinking about their portfolio of evidence, you should ensure that they have access to this. They are aware of its contents and are able to easily navigate it to easily find any specific evidence that they may wish to use in the assessment. That brings us on to mock assessments. Now, these are an absolutely essential part of being prepared for endpoint assessment. You should make sure your learners have practice at delivering a presentation within a 15 minute time limit and have taken part in a portfolio interview, ideally with someone they're not familiar with. Well, all that's left to say from me is thank you for watching. We hope that you found this useful.